Jim gives me a chance to practice my King Jamin. But you know, often, lots of times when we look around us, we enjoy the things that God has created. We see them, we're blessed by them, we participate in them, we live in them. This is, after all, the world that we were created in. But at the same time, we should recognize that we're passing through this world, that we're just sojourners for a short time, that we are going to live and exist well beyond what we call death and death's doors to a time where we'll be with God. Either we'll be with God in a blessed state or we're going to be judged by God. And then we're going to find ourselves, because of his judgment, in the lake of fire, because God will cast hell and death into the lake of fire. So, when we look around us, when we consider the times that we live in, when we think about who we are, we have to always understand that this is temporary. What you see is passing away. Everything is winding down. Physics teaches us that, that everything is deteriorating. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. And the reality of that is because creation came under a curse, that as long as it's under a curse, it is being subject to the person who cursed it. And God said that because of sin, he separated himself from it in some ways that creation itself has become contaminated, if you were, or it has become corrupted in a way that causes it to wear down rather than to exist forever. But you, if you're born of God, by the Spirit of God, are going to live forever. You're going to exist with God in a better place, a place that is not this world, that is not the things you can see, touch, feel, and hear, and understand with your senses because your body is only designed for this physical dimension. And the dimension that you live in, or the things that you see, they are like 3D or 4D, but they, they exist only in a limited space. But God exists outside of that, in a greater way, in more dimensions, so to speak. And you will also exist in that, so that you will go to heaven and see Him, even as John did when it said that, he was taken unto the day of the Lord, or taken in the day of the Lord. So, when you get and see and are affected by the things in life, remember, it's temporary. It's going to pass away. That if you're going to build your little kingdoms, or you're going to do your own little thing, or you're going to exist or be or enjoy what it is that God's provided for you, it's all going to pass away because the only thing you take with you, bluntly, is what you do in the name of Jesus and what he records for you in heaven, what he accounts to you as being faithful to what he said to do. And when you do that, then you're blessed. But you always need to bear in mind, you're just passing through. This is not your home. And as a matter of fact, if you're a born-again Christian, this world the world that you're living in is as close to hell as you will come. And this is hell for you because your flesh is fighting against your spirit and your spirit against the flesh. But when you're in heaven, you will be satisfied. And so we look at Spurgeon. And in Spurgeon today, the city hath no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. Yonder in the better world, the inhabitants are independent of all creature comforts. They have no need of raiment. Their white robes never wear out. Neither shall they ever be defiled. They have no need of medicine to heal diseases, for the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. They need no sleep to recruit their frames. They rest not day nor night, but unweariedly praise him in his temple. They need no social relationship to minister comfort, and whatever happiness they may derive from association with their fellows is not essential to their bliss, for their Lord's society is enough for their largest desires. They need no teachers there. They doubtless commune with one another concerning the things of God, but they do not require this by way of instruction. They shall all be taught of the Lord. Ours are the alms at the king's gate, 
but they feast at the table itself. Here we lean upon the friendly arm, but there they lean upon their beloved and upon him alone. Here we must have the help of our companions, but there they find all they want in Jesus. Here we look to the meat which perishes and to the raiment which decays before the moth, but there they find everything in God. We use the bucket to fetch us water from the well, but there they drink from the fountainhead and put their lips down to the living water. Here the angels bring us blessings, but we shall want no messengers from heaven then. They shall need no Gabriels there to bring their love notes from God, for, they sh for there they shall see him face to face. Oh, what a blessed time shall that be when we shall have mounted up above every second cause and shall rest upon the bare arm of God. What a glorious hour when God and not his creatures, the Lord and not his works, shall be our daily joy. Our souls shall then have attained the perfection of bliss. People often think of harps and harpsichords or whatever and angel wings and fluffy white things and all these other ideas of heaven. But when you look in the book of Revelation, it gives us a detailed description of what we shall see, of what we shall do, and what we shall know. And when we do, the reality of that experience so far surpasses this, that even Paul said that to speak of those things would be sin for how comparable it is of how bad this is compared to how wonderful that is. And in reality, I think that's what Spurgeon has just described. So remember, you're going home one day. You're not going to die. You're not going to perish. You're not going to the grave. You're not going to be non-existent. But if you have made the Lord Jesus Christ your Savior, and you have become born again of the Spirit, and you are walking with God, then you are going home soon to be with Jesus. And that is why we are just passing through this world. And don't get too attached, because this never was our home.